Some call it stubbornness. Other prefer to use words like determination, persistence, relentless, or tenacity. Regardless how we name it, this character trait could be a great asset for someone. For example, if I ask my wife for uh, specific information, she would dig in her books, she will look online until she finds the answer. And, now, and no matter how difficult my inquiry is, or how specific it is, or regardless, she will not give up until she finds the answers, even after I give up or completely forget about it. Some days she makes me think of my grandfather. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned that uh, anecdote before, and, but um, my father once told me the story, the story about his father, my grandfather, who one day decided that he could take out the jello my grandmother uh, made in her beautiful uh, glass bowl by just shaking it, you know. He eventually succeeded. He completely shattered my grandma's bowl, but he succeeded. He did not want to give up. This sort of stubbornness can be found in today's reading from uh, the book of Jeremiah. Our passage begins with the Holy One, who tells the prophet to go to the potter's house, a fairly common activity back then. If today we mostly see pottery as a form of art, producing beautiful objects like uh, elegant vase in which we put flowers, pots and jar jars of clay were the everyday war in the ancient world. They were used to store grain, wine, or anything else uh, to sustain the life of a family. Households were filled with many of them, in coming in several shape and color. Basically, they were the equivalent of our Tupperware containers that fill a cupboard. They were, so f they were so common that today archaeologists are able to identify and date an ancient civilization just by looking at the shard of broken pottery. So, so since back then these, pot were, these pots were not necessarily made for, to last for a long time, and nothing here new under the sun would say, Every village, every town probably had numerous potters who supplied to the demand. So going to the local potter's house was likely a frequent trip Jeremiah often made. And once at the potter's house, Jeremiah stops and takes time to watch the potter. He observed the tedious work of the two wheels spinning together, ex exam examined how Potter manipulated the clay. He looks at the effort required to create a vessel. And as it happened regularly, the Potter makes a mistake, a mistake of one sort or another when the clay is being molded on the spinning wheel. The vessel does not seem to adopt the desired shape. And despite this fact, the potter is not angry, the potter is not dismayed, and most importantly, the potter does not give up. Those who are courageous enough to have tried pottery know that when the clay is fired, it becomes dry, and it hardens into its permanent structure and, and shape. A pot, a mug, and a plate cannot be changed anymore. They are set forever. However, the clay that has not been fired remains plastic. 
This is why a very good potter would never give up. When something goes wrong, he or she simply collapses the clay back into a lump and begins again. And if you don't like the pot, it can be shaped and reshaped almost indefinitely. And, and even if the entered uh, vessel is completely spoiled, the clay remains uh, material, full of potential. This may be the wo most wonderful thing about pottery. A potter is not even limited by his or her original design or work. If a particular piece is not going well, well, he or she can reward the clay into something else. The potter can stretch the clay differently, imagine a sh new shape, uh, um, apply pressure differently, make the piece bigger, smaller. The clay can be modified until it is shaped as seems good to the potter. Some would say that the main difference between prophets and the rest of the population is their capacity to see the world in a different way than most of us. We all look at the same reality, but prophets are able to connect the dots in another manner and draw conclusions that completely eludes the masses. So after his visit to the potter's house, Jeremiah understands that God is like a potter. Other passages in the Bible invite us to imagine God as a ruler, a judge, a writer, a teacher, a farmer, a builder, a father, a mother, a lover, and so on. But God is also an artisan, a designer, a landscaper who fashioned the cosmos from the most distant galaxy to the smallest sub subatomic particle. And God is still creating at work today. God is like a potter who, as illustrated in the creation stories in Genesis, shaped, sculpted, and formed life out of the sediment of the earth. And God is keep breathing life into what seems to be inanimate or dead. And we are the clay in the hands of the potter. Despite of millions of years of evolution of our species, we have not reached our final configuration or final shape. We have not been fired and set forever. We're still malleable and we can be shaped and reshape almost indefinitely. During my internship as a student, I work at a chaplain in a de detention center near Kingston, Ontario. The establishment both has low and maximum security wings. Some of the guys incarcerated over there was at their first offense. For others, present was a more recurrent pattern. Some were there because they stole a car. Others were murderer, rapist, child molesters, men who are often labeled as lost cause beyond any possible rehabilitation. And one of the most common questions these guys ask me well, besides, can you bring me stuff inside? Uh, most common question was, do you think God can forgive me? They were under, wondering if God has written them off. They were, in a way, they were wondering if, as clay, they were too spoiled for being useful again. And that was a difficult question and not an easy answer to provide. But if I firmly believe that we all have to face the consequences of our actions and pay the price if we commit a crime, all of us can find reassurance in our belief that God is different than us, that God is like 
a stubborn potter that never gives up. And this is an incredible good news for all of us, regardless of our sins, our shortcomings, our failures, our mistakes. God never dismisses us. We're never too spoiled to remain God's people. There's always room for transformation, new beginnings, or redemption. God is always ready to forgive us when we take the wrong turn or deviate from the initial plan. God always longed to rework, remold, and reshape us. And of course, like pottery, it's not necessarily easy. Sometimes it takes many attempts, and it could be a very frustrating process. And yet, experiences taught us that human beings are this, have this incredibility, incredible ability to adapt. We can live in the first climate. We can make new tools, tell stories, and share knowledge with ever-changing techniques and device and technology. We are resilient, and we can learn from our mistakes. We can learn to be a little less selfish. We can learn to turn away from greed, from prejudice, from intolerance. And even if it's often painful, we can roll ourselves back into a lump of clay and look for God's help for being reshaped. Out of a common practice, going to a common place. Jeremiah discovers an extraordinary truth about the nature of God and God's people. God is like a stubborn potter who never gives up and never gets tired of working with crackpots like us. We might be flawed and perfect, spoiled, but it does not matter because our God never wipes God's end off of us. When everybody has abandoned us, when no one believes in us, when we have reached our lowest point, God is still there, ready to mold, stretch, and reform us, and to transform us into a vessel of God's good news for our world. Amen.